I'll tell you what, if you've been watching Facebook, you know that people are getting ugly and nasty out there. So I wanted to bring in somebody today to see if this is generational or if it is across the board. Please welcome to the program from our sister station, 95SX. We've got the one and only Sparkle. Good morning, Sparkle. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. I'm great. You are, uh, where are you in the millennial scale? I Googled this. I Googled this. I am on the cusp. Like, it was like basically being born, uh, I think the cutoff was like 89. You had to be born between, I think, like a certain all the way up to 89. I was 87. So we're so good. So you're in there. You're I'm a, a millennial. millennial, but I'm like on the cusp. I would say my little brother, who's 22, is the prime millennial. Okay, he's the prime right now. So what are you? You're a you are like a millennial on the cusp of an X Gen. Yeah, something like that. But like not my dad's X Gen. <laughs> or he's a baby boomer, right? <laughs> your dad's a baby boomer. Oh, I was about to say 60s. Your, your dad better not be an X Gen. <laughs> <laughs> no, he no. better be a baby no, boomer. No, he's 61 was yeah, his year. Definitely so, yeah. a baby boomer. Mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. right. So, uh, again, uh, seeing all these people of our generation and uh, and th- everybody's going back and forth at each other. I mean, people are losing friends. They're, they're I mean, I myself, have I haven't unfriended any. I did. I take that back. I did unfriend a I couple. I did. I unfriended two people. All I right. did. So w- what would make a millennial who is so in tune with with uh, with social media, and you guys live and die by this I stuff, do. and you just Snapchatted something as a second ago. As soon as I walked ago. in. And, <laughs> and what would make a millennial unfriend somebody on, on Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever well, you're doing? I mean, the first thing, if you're mean, but yeah. I'm talking about mean like you, you insult somebody's character right. uh, beyond their opinion. I have defriended because of that. Yeah. I have a hundred percent. Especially if you sound ignorant and you don't have any facts because there's like a mean because you have an opinion and you're right. really passionate. Then there's like a mean where it's like we're gonna talk about your mom, your education, yeah. your value system. That I've unfriended because of that. That's the, too far. Too far. Over you they cross the malign the, the line. Yeah. The mm-hmm. millennial line with you. <laughs> so are you seeing a lot of uh, millennials going back and forth at each other over this election? Oh my goodness, hundred percent. I mean, mm-hmm. my my best friend got off Facebook for a whole year, she decided during the 2016 because yeah. she was getting so emotional on Facebook. She deleted really? her account and now I'm like ramped up. I'm like, let me get on social media and talk about politics because I love it. Yeah. Uh with reason but um i think the number one thing that people are doing is facebook is such a expressive you can be anybody you want Mm -hmm. you can be nobody you want you can just be an observer so they genuinely feel like it's a public platform it's like their version of a soapbox they're right, standing yeah. on their soapbox, even if there's only their mom listening yeah. <laughs> and liking. <laughs> but mom's going to hear what I have to say. Yeah. And so it's like they're, it's their soapbox. Yeah. And so that's why we're doing it. And plus millennials, we're a little, I, I'm not going to say me, we're a little about ourselves. Mm-hmm. A little? <laughs> a little, yeah, okay. a little um, about ourselves. So we feel like our opinion is the best and you can't change it. So what are you doing? So. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, and I there was a a thing out on uh, a video out on the internet about how corporations need to relate to millennials because <laughs> I saw did you like see that? that? And I it saw was, a version of that. Yeah, it was like, uh, well, uh, you know, I have to feel like I matter. I have to feel like my opinion is valuable. We have to feel like we're changing the world with you. Yes. Yes, I exactly. did. I did see that. Yeah. Is that the way you feel and, and your um, friends feel? When I read a very ver- similar version of that article, I could relate to about 85% of it mm-hmm. because I do want to feel like I want to change the world. I do want to feel like my opinion matters. I do want to feel like I'm a part of something bigger than myself. Right. But what I didn't relate to it is the entitlement part of the article where it's like you better relate to me i'm like no you got this is a give or take in the business world same with relationships so i didn't get that i didn't really understand that part but a hundred percent all of my friends want to change the world even if they're working at chick-fil-a they want to change the world (laughs) (laughs) but how how do millennials think they're going to be able to do that you know, I always thought it would be with the most creative idea. Mm-hmm. That's where I think I'm going to change the world, I hope. Right. Or maybe with hugs and glitter and sparkles and and, yes. and good attitudes. But um, I want to say that's where there's a disconnect because you can't change the world by working at a coffee shop for three hours a week. Yeah. You can't. 
That is dumb. Like, that is dumb. And I love my generation, but that's dumb. If you're going to sit at a coffee shop and complain about how everything's bad, but you're actually not going to go work on it, even right. if that means, like, just helping your neighbor or if that means doing something that's not about yourself, then you're not changing the world. It's unrealistic. So the way we're going to do it is we're, we're going to have to die to ourselves, and we're going to have to see the bigger picture, even if we're a toenail in the bigger picture. We got to do it. You might not be the smile or are the you, eyes. Are you a toenail? Um, are you a toenail in the bigger picture, Sparkle? <laughs> Is that what we're looking at? I would at? say I'm the mouth in the bigger <laughs> picture. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if the bigger picture was a body. That's what I'm saying. But every single millennial wants to be the head. They uh, want to yeah. be the mouth. They want to be the eyes. But sometimes it takes every little part for the bigger picture. But millennials don't want to do that. Are millennials good at working within a group to accomplish a goal? Um, yes. <laughs> question mark, question mark. Question mark. Uh, if everybody gets credit, then they're... Then they're okay. then they're good with that. Yeah, um, that's what goes back to dying to yourself. Yeah. Are you willing to die to what you believe in for maybe the bigger cause of what you yeah. believe in, or is it like no, what I what like basically every millennial is like what I believe is the most important thing, and you're never going to change me, so why are you even trying? Right. And I'm defending you because of it. <laughs> so uh, millennials, I mean, we have seen great generations before. I mean, we saw the the generations that stormed the beaches at at Normandy. We saw generations mm. that lived through the Great Depression. We saw the generation that basically gave this country the liberty <laughs> that we have today to be on Facebook and to be on Facebook <laughs> and, and and all of that. And uh, does this generation have that capacity you to know, do great things? We do, but and I hate to say this, but it goes back to. Okay, so we're told at five years old we can do anything we want. Right. We are told that. I remember telling my dad that I wanted to be an artist and I could barely draw. I I feel like I'm better now. But (laughs) I told him I wanted to be a tap dancer. I told him, I told my dad at sixth grade I was going to be a stand up comedian, straight up. Right. Okay. And my parents are very like, okay, you can do whatever you want. Now, my dad is a little bit more realistic. So he kept being like, are you sure you want to be a nurse or something like that? Yeah. But I have friends. That are that live with parents that are like you can do whatever you want. The thing is, is you can't do whatever you want. You are literally bad at stuff. You yeah. are bad at stuff. So we have millennials that think they can do whatever they want. Yeah. When you can't, you can't YouTube how to be an Irish dancer. You cannot YouTube that. <laughs> and I have pe- okay. I have a friend who wants to be an aerialist. Yeah. She YouTubed it, and now she does it. Expl- and and air- th- now these are the people that have the like the silk scarves the silk hanging. She has no training. She's right. never been a gymnast her entire life. She YouTubed it for six months, and now she's trying to make it as an aerialist. Professional? Professional. I'm not. She lives in Colorado, and I want to be like, no, that's so dangerous. <laughs> you could literally die. And But the, but it's a whole bunch of participation trophies. Oh, you're so yeah, good. That's right. And that's the difference between your generation and mine. Like, my grandfather was raised by my grandparents, and my grandfather was like, no, you can't do that. No. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I have been you'll told. Kill, you'll shoot your eye out. You'll kill yourself. You'll burn the house down. Something bad will happen if you attempt this. Exactly. But parents, they, they feel like, okay, the world is at your fingertips. It is relatively. Yeah. That is. But you can't, if you're bad at singing and you're living and dying, like, I'm going to be a singer. No, you're not. Like, go find what you're good at. Yeah, exactly. Find out what your talents are. <laughs> So how do you do you think millennials are, I mean, how are they poised to change the world? What, what are they, are they more involved now politically than you think they were four years ago? Because you were, I mean, you've been able to vote for, what, uh, 11 years 11 now? 11 years. Yeah, I will say that right out of high school, I felt like I was more political than any of my friends. But mm. I, I wanted to be a poli sci major for a little bit. Yeah. Then I became a theater major, so it's almost the same thing. Just about. <laughs> You're exactly right. Um, But I would say what we're so good at is we're really good at being creative and thinking out of the yeah. box. That is something that we're so good at. But we're also so good at taking a problem and making it, stretching it, manipulating it, making this total solution that nobody can think of. And one thing I will say about the previous generation maybe yours or my dad's Uh is that they have a hard time seeing that and so sometimes i'm like like i'll tell my dad hey dad let's do something like this and he'll be like that's not how that's not how it's done right and i'm like i know but i'm telling you that this is better but it's almost like that you can't see out of your box to see our new like wiggly box so (laughs) and that's that that's what's the difference is we have the capacity the creativity the drive the passion but sometimes we need the opportunities and we need you to take off your bifocals. What? What? (laughs) 
<laughs> no, well, but you also got to understand that that you can learn things from people who have tried it before. Yeah. You yes. know, and mm-hmm. I think there can be a good melding of the generations there with with us folks that say, you know what, you really can't do that. But I haven't tried it. Okay. But I haven't tried it. And yeah. Well, go ahead and try it. <laughs> well, there's like a lot my, to it'd be say. Like my grandfather telling me, "You're going to burn the house down." <laughs> there's <laughs> a lot burn. to say. With I think maybe that's where the next generation comes in and are more like mentors. Yeah. Maybe like mentorship and maybe guiding, helping. But at the same time, I see. I mean, I see some creative partners happening with the next generation. This generation, right. it's almost like. We both have to get over ourselves. And I have to tell you this. This is what my mom said last night. She thinks that my grandpa's super entitled, 100%. Yeah. Because he's super old now, like really old. Yeah. Um, he has to rely on a lot of things. But he gets so stuck in his ways and so entitled about what, the way things are that he'll literally like leave the room if it's not how he wants. And my mom's like, you're the same as a freaking millennial. And we, they were arguing about it because he just moved to South Carolina. Yeah. And she was like, they have an entitlement problem. Like literally now that's, is that above baby boomer? Cause he's like a hundred. He's like, 80. yeah, that's above baby boomer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Sparkle. We appreciate you being on the program. Thank you for that millennial perspective. Thank you. Sparkle <laughs> from our sister station, 95 SX. It's 13 minutes until 10 o'clock on the big talker, 1250 WTMA. <laughs>